Welcome back to today's D5 render tutorial. In this lesson, I'll show you how to create a daytime scene using the steps taught in the previous lesson. Before we get started, take a look at what's in the demo scene. This is an interior scene provided by Evermotion. We can see in the bottom left of this image it's rendered in 6K resolution and in a TGA format. For this rendering, I've used D5 Render powered by an NVIDIA RTX 3080. Alright, let's dive right in. In this example, I'm using 3DS Max and D5 Render. As mentioned before, make sure your models are all checked. Then open your file in Max and click Start in the D5 Converter for 3DS Max to start D5 Render. At the upper left is a menu where you can find most of D5's frequently used features. On the right you can find the Import Model button, with which you can import SKP, D5A, FBS. 3DM and ABC files into D5. You can find D5's preset asset library and your local library in assets. On the left side are the scene list, object list, and a list of imported models. This large area in the middle is the main viewport, and above it is the navigation bar. Here, from left to right, are lights, path tool, vegetation tool, and particles. Settings related to the camera, display, and navigation modes are here in the corner. On the upper right of the interface, there are three buttons, Image Rendering Mode, Video Editing and Rendering Mode, and Render Queue. Down here is a sidebar that is divided into three sections, Environment, Effects, and Inspector. Now that we've gone through the interface of D5 Render, you can see, it's very easy to use and yet, absolutely capable of handling any of your visualization work. There are two modes to navigate in your scene, orbit and fly. Orbit mode is how you navigate in most 3D modeling software. By moving the mouse while holding down the right mouse button you can change the camera view. By using the mouse scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out. In fly mode, you use the W, A, S, and D keys to move around as in most video games. You can press the Q and E keys to move the camera higher or lower. Moving the mouse while holding down the right mouse button will also change the view. When your camera view is exactly the way you want it, you can go to camera settings and adjust the depth of field, field of view, and more. Two-point perspective is also available here. The keyboard shortcut is F8. Now, add a new scene in the scene list, the camera position will be saved, as well as the natural lights and post-processing information. When all the camera parameters are set, you can then adjust the sunlight and skylight in D5. Click Environment and you'll see Geo and Sky HDRI. Geo and Sky is an adjustable tool for simulating natural lights in the real world. Just drag the sun angle control lever to change the time and corresponding sun angle. Down below you'll see the weather panel with the cloud, fog, and wind parameters. Cloud supports adjustment of the amount, speed, and direction of clouds. Turn on the fog effect and you can adjust the density of fog as you wish. If you're looking for the Tyndall effect or sun rays in your scene, just select volume light here. The last one is the wind effect. It works on dynamic models. If I place a dynamic tree in the scene and add some strength, you can see the tree moving in the wind. With more strength, the tree will appear to be blown by a stronger wind, and the direction of the wind is determined by the angle you set here. That's it for Geo and Sky. Now let's talk about HDRIs. Click HDRI to toggle between the different control modes of the natural lighting. You can apply default or custom HDRI maps in D5, but please note that some HDRI maps come with sunlight. In that case, you may need to decide whether you want the sun from an HDRI or from D5 itself. With HDRIs, you can't adjust how high the sun is. Instead, you can rotate the whole HDRI map for better angles to create the ideal effect you're after. Click light to set the overall brightness of the scene. Color temperature adjustment is also supported. Down here we have parameters pertaining to the sun. Sun disk radius controls the size of the sun and affects the softness of the edges of shadows. Here's how it works, lower this parameter for sharper edges of shadows. If you want the edges of shadows to be softer, then set this parameter higher. Now, I have chosen an HDRI that I often use and I'm setting the light to max. I'll change it to have a colder tone and give it some rotation to get a better angle, allowing the sun to shine into the room. 
and some more adjustments of the sun. Now we are done with the natural lighting for this scene. Don't forget to save all the changes in the scene list. At this point, let's take a look at the scene. What do you think? Looks to me like it still needs more lighting. There's not enough light coming in the windows from the outside. So I'm going to add some light sources to increase the light from the sky. In version 2.1 of D5, the GI effect has been boosted, so whether it needs more lighting depends on your scene. Click Add Lights and add a rectangular light. Place it parallel to the window and adjust its size. Normally, I'd make it a little bigger than the window and leave some room between the light and the window. Next, I'll set the light's color. Here are my parameters for your reference. When the parameters for this light are all set, copy and paste it to another window and do the same thing. Select all these rectangular lights in the object list and set the attenuation radius a little higher. Based on what we have in the preview, you can further adjust certain parameters for better results. Now we have a very nice daytime interior scene rendered. Okay, that's it for today's video. Give it a try yourself in D5 Render and you'll see just how easy it is. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.